minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, welcome to the Trap Talk Reptile Network. Of course, the coolest reptile network in the world. Uh, this is a new segment we're calling a All Tree Monitor Talk. You guys might know me. My name's Cody. I am the host of the uh, talk today and going forward. Um, today, I have with me Corey. Hey. Uh, Corey Martin. What's your Instagram again? It's Corey Martin Reptiles. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, that's yeah. easy. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're just going to be talking, you know, all things tree monitors uh, before we get started. Um, of course, just got to shout out US Arc. Uh, make sure you guys uh, support US Arc. They do a lot for us. Um, conservation, keeping, uh, keeping laws restricted, um, trying to impede on us. So, you know, just make sure you guys support US Arc. That just reminded me I'm due to renew my membership. Really? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, my uh, I'm totally off tangent to start it, but yeah. God, I had one point when at my last job I was uh, competing in a video game tournament at a mm -hmm. retail store and I won. And they're like, "Hey, here's a uh, two thousand dollars you can donate to wherever." And I was like, "U.S. Art." Throw that's cool <laughs> that's that way cool three or four years ago yeah wow but anyways so how's it going it's good how are you good awesome <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a late night hopefully we get some some people hanging out with us right hey saturday though you know um this is true. yeah this yeah is i true. work uh i work four to nine p.m usually so wow. nine thirty central works for me but yeah yeah. Oh. So, um, you know, just, uh, just hanging in there. Right. Um, so you just got, uh, you were telling me before we started a, yeah. a clutch during Tinley. I did. Yeah. So I got a, I got a black tree monitor clutch. It was, nice. my, yeah, it was my third clutch from this girl. Oh, and shit. Okay. yeah, she's been, this clutch arrived 86 days after she had previously laid. She Heck is, yeah. like, she is just a beast and I am incredibly, incredibly lucky to have her. Oh yeah. No kidding. Yeah. That she sounds like my green. Yeah. Uh, how old is she now? So I'm not entirely sure. She was um, wild caught and I bought her as a long-term captive. I've had her for about, I say, I want to say a little over a year. Mm -hmm. um, so she's probably somewhere in the like three and a half to four kind of age range i would guess mm -hmm. um, but nice. I oh no that's great yeah yeah i'm uh with my green i got her i don't know i want to say she was about a year year and a half old and six months after i got her she just started like dropping eggs every 90 days yeah that's amazing um but uh but yeah at first i don't know how it was with yours but at first for me i feel like she she started cycling too young and mm -hmm. so her first clutch was like literally two eggs and they were duds. Interesting. And three months later, two more eggs and one was good. And then three months later, two more eggs. And it took five or six clutches before she ever laid even three for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was it was wow. a headache. Yeah, I, just, I just totally lucked out with her. She Her very first clutch hatched out and it was four babies. Um, oh, that's awesome. They all made it through. I It was like, and that was my first tree monitor clutch. It was just like, the most stupid beginner's luck ever right no, it, like, that's insane even brandon and i have talked about that like of a black tree of all things Are you i know <laughs> so completely random um yeah, yeah meanwhile with my black tree um i am as as 
again, Brandon calls it a phantom clutch. I am. I was going to mention that just a second ago. So tell me about your phantom clutch. She has done it three times in a year and a half. Wow. Uh, so she will. And the last two were so totally different than the first one. I'm like, okay, this has to be it. Yeah. Uh, Cause the first one, it was like, she wall hung, she hung hard enough that I'm like, she's only two years old. I'm a bit concerned. I'm going to get an ultrasound done. Uh huh. Three decent sized follicles. Uh, and I'm like, okay, they're, I think she's going through vitilogenesis. So I put them together. 10 days later, they lock, they lock for three days separated. And then she ate the whole time and then dug a little bit and then nothing. Um, and then the second and third time they locked for like five days. Uh huh. And those times she swelled way bigger, so big that I, I typically like from the last lock, I'll I'll shoot for like a 30 day window, right? Mm-hmm. And she swelled so big that for the last 10 days leading up to when I thought she would lay, she did not eat once. Whoa. She went off food for 10 days, did not eat a single time, and then no eggs. That's wild. Yeah. So three times wow. of that now, and Brandon's just like I don't know, man. I, it's just a black tree thing. I don't know what to Yeah, t- I don't I don't know. That's I've had a few people ask me for tips. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't do anything special. I just got Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. Um, so yeah. for changing it up, like the I I kept everything the same the first two times and then the third time and I was like, all right, I'm gonna like bump the temperatures back up sooner because yeah. I like drop temperatures to try to stimulate her. And uh, the third time I bumped them up sooner seeing if anything would change and I, I like fed her way more no difference <laughs> pain in the ass man but so my green tree my first cycle with her was one of those like phantom cycles yeah. where she they locked she her belly grew huge she finally at the end started digging tunnels and disappeared for like probably like 12 hours or so in one of her tunnels and then nothing and really so, and nothing so i don't know if she like slugged and ate the eggs while she was in the tunnel or if nothing right don't know and that's my predicament as well is like i don't have cameras on them yeah and so i'm wondering like did she actually lay them and i and she just ate them and i don't know yeah um this time around i'm gonna try and add like an extra two lay boxes to see if like maybe it's just like an issue of uh, yep. Lane preference. I have no yep. idea. So it's... I know. you never know. They're so tricky and and they're all so different. Mm-hmm. But it's your like... green's the one giving you issues, not the black. Just the first. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Cause she's also not laying right now. I got, she, she did that the first cycle. Then I got two clutches from her. And then this most recent cycle, she didn't go when I was expecting her to, she didn't start really. That's so like weird. That. So I have, I, I don't know. She, she stayed thin a little bit longer than I probably like, she took her a little while to bounce back from this last time. And so I'm assuming it's something related <laughs> to that, but, um, right. But yeah, I, I kept getting in my own head and like, yeah. you know, hyper, I, I kept getting in my own head and like, you know, the hypochondriac thing where I'm just like, God, she's like six and a half years old now. Is she like slowing down? Yeah. And then I'm talking to some other people that have been doing it way longer than i have and they're like dude she's in her prime right now (laughs) i'm like that that's way better to hear because i'm you know getting in my own head and i'm like oh god she's slowing down yada yada (laughs) but now i told you she was primarily doing two eggs and then she built up to three yeah she was doing three for like a year and a half now she's laying four or five every time oh good yeah Uh, yeah i definitely think i like maybe like somewhat stunted her by getting her like reproductively active so young so i know from breeding snakes that's i mean it's it is something that you kind of see sometimes when with mm-hmm. pythons at least when you breed yeah. on the early side some it's very common for them to go that first year with a smaller clutch size and then some and of then them never year, yeah and then maybe come back the next year yeah, and then I've seen some people say too, like if you if you force like a boa, for example, yeah, to for- have that small like litter when they're too young, um, they will never get up to like the max of like a a female that you let get 
like That's a little bit older and bigger first. And so I'm then, like, I wonder if that's also what the I did. thing of like, if they're like their bodies kind of no generally are going to know like right. when they're ready too. So mm -hmm. it's, you, I don't know. I could go either way on it. Right. Yeah. And like I sold, um, not even to Parker, funny enough. I sold a green two years ago this month to somebody that took just terrible care of her. Mm -hmm. And then Parker found her for sale. And it was so funny because she was on Morph Market. And he messages me and he goes, dude, this is the prettiest green I've ever seen. Should I buy this? Is this legit? And I went, I produced that. Oh. <laughs> and he was like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah, that's one of mine. Like, sold. <laughs> Yeah, and so he bought her, and then she shows up with, like, toes missing, like, this much of her tail missing. And he's oh, just, what no. happened? And she was a year and a half? No, she was, like, a year when he got her. Okay. And she and he's, like, constantly fighting to stop her from cycling right now. Oh, wow. Because he's just trying to get that extra size on her? Yeah, like, I, you know, I warned him, like, what I've been through with mine yeah. and then other people have done, and so I'm just yeah. like... I'd like maintenance feed the hell out of her until she hits at least like two, two and a half and then try to push her. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's going through right now. And, awesome. and just like, if he just slips up and gives her one extra meal a week, she's just like wall hanging like crazy. Oh gosh. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's definitely a character though. Uh, when he got her, he was just like, yeah, this is kind of ridiculous because it's by far the most social animal I've ever seen. Well, you put a lot of energy into socializing your animals, yeah? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, Gene, by the way? Gin, Gene. I, I have no idea how to say it. I, I hear Kai say it one way and Stefani say it another, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Is it Gin? <laughs> Oof. But, but yeah, the uh, it's it's fun. I'll, I'll say that for sure. Yeah. No, I'm, um, I'm enjoying working with Treat Monitor so much. Are you? Did, so much. Didn't I hear you say something about like wanting to dial back other things to do more? Of oh, those? I have like dialed that. back other things. You have? Yeah. Right. So, so right around the time I was starting to get into Treat Monitors, I had done this big expansion on the snake side and actually moved into a facility. And like, oh, really? Yeah. And I started with keeping my monitors over there. Uh huh. Learned really fast that it wasn't um adequately secure for monitors really um, oh no yeah my so let me tell you this story this is this is gonna make me look terrible but um we'll say it anyway so that female black tree monitor i have uh -huh. um i was spraying her enclosure one day and she bolted and within about two minutes she was just gone to the point that like i couldn't find her she climbed the root to, she climbed the walls got into the ceiling really oh, hear her crawling around on the ceiling um and then after about 30 minutes it was just silence really and i was just like holy shit i'm never gonna see this animal again and i mean a week and a half later um i got a call from my um landlord and they were like so are you missing a black tree monitor by any chance Oh no. And they had found her in my next door neighbor's unit. Seriously? Um, yeah. Yeah. Lucky they weren't like mortified of reptiles yes. and the person actually um recognized what it was, which I was super impressed oh, by. Oh seriously. Yeah, he ID'd it. Oh, that's correctly. really lucky. Yeah. It scared wow. the crap out of him. But um and he helped me catch her and um Heck yeah. that weekend I moved all my lizards out. Yeah, I uh to share a somewhat of a similar nightmare um so it's all just in my house right yeah um i had do you know what obor are like torch monitors yes okay so we had obor a while back like a few years ago and this animal was like genuinely like satan incarnate <laughs> it was so <laughs> evil like she would no matter what like i could give her a million hides and she would always find like the worst place to cram herself into uh -huh. in the background of the enclosure oh, um no. i had a 10 gallon aquarium and she would wedge under it and she would get into these spots she couldn't get out and so oh. i would have to constantly pull her out get bit doing it yep. and it because if i didn't she'd be there for three days yep and um uh, at one point we had her in like a huge vision enclosure, right? Uh-huh. I didn't realize this vision enclosure was just like ever so slightly like 
askew to one side and w there must have been just like a little bit of dirt in the door track to where it didn't close all the way which made a gap like this in the top oh, no. and uh this was the day i posted her for sale she sold instantly and then i went i got a locator because i think she's in my air vent oh my god <laughs> it took oh god. two and a half she was in the vents of my house for two and a half weeks whoa yeah and then i'm like i'll i'll take her to a vet make sure she's good hold yeah. her for a couple weeks and yeah. then ship her but yeah she was uh she was in the vents for over two weeks okay and this was middle of the summer so the ac was on and oh, so what finally got god. her out was a it took us oh, over a week to figure out she was in there yeah and then it, this was a rental we can't just cut into the vents right yeah um and so we're like banging on the vents and we can hear her scurry finally what did it i was like i'm gonna turn the heat on and i uh, cranked the heat to like 84 uh -huh. and uh left for a little bit and my roommate calls me and he goes yep found her in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> yep so okay i guess i did it yeah but yeah that was uh yeah. since then we have replaced all of our vent covers with stuff they can't fit in that's so. really smart <laughs> yeah really, really smart um yeah so um so i'm i'm actually now in the process of closing down my facility um i'm i've sold i used to really a lot of had a very large ball python collection i've <laughs> sold my entire ball python group at this point um i've sold holy shit I, yeah i've sold my all of my other snakes and uh still i'm still holding on to a few because i also bred like black-headed pythons and carpet oh, really? pythons and all sorts of i hadn't actually oh, nice. bred the, the black headed, so i had them they were going to be breeding this year um but it ended up being just like this space thing right where i was like i can keep some space dedicated to these animals but i really just want to be working with monitors and a, a few they're just so much more fun so much more fun so much more fun and a few other i have a few other lizards as well um and i was like if i if i i'm either paying money to house all this other stuff or i can bring everything back home and if i do that i really just have limited space right and stuff and so so that's where i am right now so um i'm all of the snakes are sold and i am exclusively that's lizard so now. crazy yeah no i i feel that though so like when i started i was like you know i had a ball python and a like a boa imperator yeah and then got a like varicosis chameleon like the giant spiny chameleon i love those i still like those mm -hmm. and then i got my first like quince monitor and i was just hooked from there and yeah. we started doing boa breeding and i instantly got bored yeah and uh so i i like got out of it got really bored and then finally i was like okay i'll i'll put the effort back in just to get a litter to say i did it yeah and then as soon as we got a litter we sold them you're like done, uh, done. <laughs> I've never done that. and like yeah. we invested so much time and money into green tree pythons and we still mm -hmm. have most of them but basically my roommate likes snakes more and i like the monitors more okay. so i was like let's just call it because it was like i'll buy some green tree pythons he buys some I'll buy some tree monitors. He buys some, and we're like, let's just call it a split. You take snakes, I take monitors. That's cool. And so now he does all the snakes, I do all the monitors. Um, but it's like, it's so much easier just focusing on one oh, variety yeah. of animal for care. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. But like, I still like the green tree pythons. I still like our emerald tree boas. Yeah. Um, I, I like all of them, but I would need five hundred of them to get the same like right. stimulation right. for myself as I get out of the 20 tree monitors. Same. And it's, it's insane. And I, and I feel just like, you know, you can put as much time into it as you want to, and you're going to get something out of that time. Right. Oh and yeah. Cause, Cause it's just <laughs> like you learn your animals and mm -hmm. um, the more, you know, your animals, like the better and better <laughs> you are as a breeder. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely a subjective thing, but like, I just personally read monitors so much better yeah. than I read the body language of snakes. Yeah. And so that's one of the other reasons why I'm just like, yep, yeah, give me, give me all those, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but I, I do love the green tree python still. We produced one single one and it's, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. It's about a year and a half old now. It's, oh, that's very uh, cool. Little demon. It's uh Jayapura biak. Okay. Mix, and uh -huh five days old it was already eating no mm. effort 
crushing pinkies left and right. Wow. Uh, and it was eating every five days consistently, never missed a meal. That's um, amazing. It hit a year and a half old and started going through its color change uh -huh. instantly it's like the biak came out of it and it's just an asshole now and it <laughs> strikes at everybody and it bit my roommate on the face <laughs> like yeah because oh, no. up until two it, this is within the last two weeks oh up until God. two weeks ago we could just reach in and pick it up and it's fine yeah, yeah. and then well, he I reaches in and grabs it and then strikes, strikes and strikes and strikes and it's a little nutcase oh, now no. That's I've how only the seen a couple of face bites, but it hasn't been with an animal with teeth that big. Yeah, uh, he got he got nailed like right on the cheekbone by the mom Ooh. of that one too. She was Ooh. six years old. Yep, got him pretty good. I bet. Yep, but no, the the green tree pythons are fun. I always liked those. They're just yeah, they're very cool. I had I had a few at one point. Did you? Nice. Yeah. They're just very sedentary. Like they don't yes. move. They don't do anything. And like yeah. at night they move, but they do. But yeah, yeah. I, it's one of the things I like with them with the tree monitors. We have my green tree monitors are just like in my family room, and they're yeah. active and jump around, and everyone watches them, and they're just a right. Blast. Like my whole family oh, yeah. is obsessed with them. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's so funny, too, because whenever I tell people, like, I breed monitors or I keep monitors, they're like, what is it, like, four feet long? And I'm like, technically, they're, like, three feet, but they're, like, <laughs> the body size of a... what you're thinking. <laughs> they're, like, the body size of a bearded dragon, just yeah. skinny. Like, yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. But, they're yeah, they, they just have so much personality, you know, and, like... Oh, I know. Especially once they're comfortable and will actually, like, walk around and do stuff while you're in there. Yeah. It's the yeah. best, like... I told you I got a blue tree from Brandon this week. You did? Um, yep. Yeah, she's uh, already crushing food. Amazing. Off and everything. Um, but she has a big personality on her. She thinks she's the toughest thing in the house, for sure. Amazing. Like, I open the door and she puffs her throat and walks sideways all over the enclosure. <laughs> yeah, she's she's insane. <laughs> but she's standing her ground. like. Oh, yeah. That's funny. But yeah, like any hand move, like if I open the door, any hand movement, she's like all hunched up and like throwed out, and oh, yeah, she funny. she thinks she's real tough, and yeah, I'll, I'll I'll tongue feed her dubia, and then she just paces back and forth with it. Oh yeah, my God, that's really she's funny. she's ridiculous. I I don't know all of the blues that I've had, so I have I have I think eight right now. Um, they're all kind of shy. Really. And they're all captive bred, but they're oh, all yeah. kind of shy. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, this girl, I mean, obviously I'm very into the socializing stuff, but yep. I've already gotten to her to walk on me a couple times. That's awesome. Um, and then obviously she showed up Tuesday. Yes. Um, but uh, I don't have videos of it on Instagram yet, no. I, I should post one of them. You should post. That'd be fun to see. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, I haven't mastered the like tongs and camera and arm. Oh, dude, it's it's thing. bad. So like yeah. I hold my phone like this and then I pinch <laughs> the tongs with these two fingers uh -huh. and I and I hold it like this so I can do my other hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's yeah, I need to quite practice. the acrobat trick. Somebody needs to make like a 3D well, 3D printed. Yeah. Well, I, I'm gonna get Michael Brown on it. Make a 3D printed uh clip for tongs to snap your phone into them. That would be smart. I yeah. bet it wouldn't be too hard to do. Right. I'm thinking of all the various little like GoPro kind of clips that go on different mm -hmm. things. <laughs> like I 3D print. I I'm not super good at the high functional stuff like that. Yeah. Like the more intricate stuff. Michael Brown just rips that stuff out. It's it's insane. Awesome. Uh, have you seen his uh, his plaques that he does? The native range stuff. I yes. Yeah. yeah those that's are him. Not at Tinley, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw those. Those are incredibly beautiful. Yep, the Native Range Studios is his Instagram. Um, okay. He he has some Incredibly really beautiful. cool stuff. He sent me with uh, one of the plaques for the blue tree and one for the green also. And that's so cool. They're, they're really they're really nice. I freaking love it. Um, yeah, t today actually the the my female green. I told you earlier she's just been like voracious for food. Just isn't yeah. cycling yet. I opened the door, barely got the tongs up, and she dove out, hit the mouse, and landed on the plaque. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, they're they're goofy, man. Oh, I love them so though. Fun. So uh, fun. 
So what other, you said you're doing other lizards. What all, what all yeah, else so, are you doing right now? So in addition to the tree monitors, um, <laughs> I'm also breeding Ackies. Um, and I've only produced one clutch of them so far. Um, I have several different species of spiny tailed iguanas. Um, so I have, nice. um, so I have like pectinata, um, paleoris, which are the ones from the, from Guatemala and then uh, okay. Rotom, um, locality ones too. And um, so I have those. And then I also have um, Colodes, Colodes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know what those are? They're like bright green with like red heads that, that little. Oh, like, okay, yeah. Talking about. Um, and so I have a, a few of those. Um, I, monitor wise, I'm also working. I have a group of kings monitors that have done absolutely nothing for me. Oh, really? I bought them, so I got them as as I got them as proven adults, and um, I think that they were past their useful breeding age when I got them. Oh no! Yeah. So um, I get lots of slugs from them. It's super fun. <laughs> right. Oh, that's yeah. too bad. Lots of slugs. Um, uh, and then I also have like, um, so I have peacock monitors. Okay. And I have uh, similis. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I literally just have, so like we have a shit ton of snakes, but I, I personally now I have just tree monitors. That's, that's so that. awesome just three monitors That's i have awesome. uh i was counting earlier mind you i i handed off my yellow tree at tinley mm -hmm. and sold one of the babies to actually a guy that's in chat um but i have two hatchlings that hatched a month ago a month and a half ago um awesome. i have two more that hatched in December, and then I have my holdback that hatched September. Okay. And so, like every three months. And, yeah. And so my my holdback's like seven months, and then I have some four month olds, and then one month olds, and then I have a wild caught green who's actually looking for a home. Uh, so if anybody's looking for a adult female green, I have one. <laughs> she needs a good home. She was not treated very well before I got oh, her. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, she was kept in a in a literally a sixteen by sixteen by twenty rep debris with another animal oh, for no. like four months, oh, and so oh, she funny. starved herself nearly to death, and it's taken me seven months to get all the weight back on her. Oh, and, that poor baby. Uh, yep. So it's that's a long time. All oh, that poor thing. Yep. Yeah, and it she started slamming food instantly, and she didn't yeah. put on any weight for a month and a half just because she had been so long without food. Yeah. So. Oh, poor thing. Yeah, but yeah. yeah and, so, so yes, yeah, so you have her. Yeah, um, and then uh, the pair of greens, obviously, pair of yep. blacks, pair of blues, and then my female yellow died. Uh, and it sucks because I was like done with the yellows, and I'm like, I would rather have more cordensis or more greens. Yeah. So I'm gonna sell the yellows, and the guy who bought them, really cool dude. He's just like, hey, do you mind? holding them for a couple months while I set up an enclosure. Two weeks later, the male fucked her tail up. Um, oh, had to have, no. yeah, had to have surgery amputated, like literally this much of her tail. And then yeah, it all went necrotic. She, Whoa, uh, do you have any idea what, like, what was the impetus behind that? Like, I, he's so food motivated, but oh, not. He was just being probably food aggressive with her. I, I think, think it wasn't even aggression i think yeah. her tail might have been in the cup of dubias and he oh, just grabbed it by accident got it and and you could see where he bit and then you could see a break all the way up here from her trying to yank away and broke her tail and so oh, we had to amputate everything above the break or below the break yeah. yeah um but yeah it was uh three weeks after that she had dropped between the surgery and, and three weeks after, she dropped almost 100 grams. She was, like, eating but not wow. putting on weight, and she just dropped. Wow. Um, oh, that's great. But interesting thing. Yeah. I haven't I haven't talked about this publicly yet. Um, you mentioned not not putting this on your animals. Yeah. But you mentioned you have a, a pair that just constantly drops duds. So what's interesting is not only did she have all that issues – 
and like calcium deficiencies and all this shit from yeah. surgery, not eating. She somehow started cycling in the middle of all this. Oh my and God. so when she died, she had two centimeter follicles, like five of them. Mm. Um, she's laid eggs for me twice and the previous owner four times. She has never laid a fertile egg. Uh, so what was lucky is we sent her entire body off to a pathologist uh -huh. and they studied whole body. Um, we weren't even expecting this. They sent back an entire like novel of an email just uh -huh. talking about how um, because she was in a cycle, they could see how her follicles were messing with her ovaries and causing inflammation in her ovaries as well as throwing off her white blood cell count. And they said oh, wow. very specifically, this animal was never going to be able to produce fertile eggs. Wow. Yeah. So me and the previous owner were just like, that sucks, but at least we don't. Yeah, like, but at least I wasn't doing something. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It gave us peace of mind. Like, yeah. you know, she's laid because she laid 10 eggs for me and she probably laid 15 or 20 for him. And not one was good. Oh. And and so we just got at least that weight off our shoulders of like, yeah. it's not us. Yeah. It still sucks. But um, but yeah, so definitive answer of like, she couldn't produce. And I'm like, I didn't even know that was really possible. But we only got that answer because she died while cycling. That's so how, I mean. Yeah weird right crazy crazy luck i guess i don't know right i mean so interesting to learn that though mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah and the the guy who she came from too is somebody that works at the zoo here and so he's like he obviously has a lot of experience yeah and and we were both just stumped until then but yeah wow. she had a, a plethora of issues she was probably over 10 years old yeah. Um, best guess is she was 10 or 11 years old at least. And then, um, yeah, they found like, uh, constrictions in her lower intestine that were causing blockages and like oh, wow. old stuff from before she was probably even imported. And they're like, yeah. yeah, it all just like compiled and hit her at once and killed her. Mm. Yep. Well, the dude I they're mean, going to is really cool about it though. As an imported animal is honestly like good on her. Mm hmm. Oh Yeah. But yeah, the the dude who they're going to is really cool about it though. I just gotta he's letting me replace her, which sucks oh. for the wallet, but yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So now I just gotta replace her and we'll call it a day. Yeah, um, so so you are gonna stick with the yellow project? No, so I'm s i am already gave him the mail. Oh, 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 got it. Yeah, so okay. I'm just gonna buy him a new female. Got, I see, I see, I see. The person yep. you got it. Okay. But yeah, I uh to continue that list, I, I yeah. also have five cordensas. That's amazing. So, I'm so jealous of your cordensas. They're probably oh yeah, I sent you those pictures of those, you right? Did. They're those two that you have that are on the like far ends of the spectrum color wise, insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the super lime green yellow yeah. one. Yeah, and what sucks is I've bought other than these like three or four babies, I think I've bought seven cordensis in the last two years and they've all been male every one of them That's even so the bad. ones that were sold as female all ended up male That's and so this time i'm like you know what i'm gonna start with some captive breads yeah and uh and and that one wild cotton babies wow. and just raise them up and see what happens yeah we were talking about this the other day but i mean the worse odds than i had with my blue project where i ended up with um out of five <laughs> animals four were males and one was a female and i had purchased and one of them that I had purchased as a female was actually a male. Oh, um, seriously? Yep. Um, and it was really frustrating, too, because when it arrived, I called them out on it. And I was like, dude, this is a male. And then they just, like, gaslit shit out of me. Oh, no. I like, don't know what you're looking for, you know, blah, blah, blah. And at this point, like, I was still fairly new. And I was like, maybe I don't know what I'm looking for. And then a little while later, I was like, that's a fucking male. <laughs> damn yeah. that's that's too bad yeah. um yeah there's a a shop in florida that's pretty notorious for miss sexing stuff and yeah. funny it's, enough it's, they it was a uh, shop in texas that's was it that's notorious for bad things 
Damn. So I knew better than buying it. Right. But yeah, the one I'm talking about, they, they have a lot of gold spotted that they sell. And Got it. I'm with you now. Yeah. And they usually, so I've come to figure out they basically only ever sell males. Yeah. And I know somebody that bought two or three gold spotted from them all as males and two of them ended up female. Wow. <laughs> so that's, they got really lucky. That's yeah. crazy. I've, I've purchased two animals from them and they've both been male. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, it's uh Yep. People are taking note. It's they they exclusively sell males if they can help. And the first one was sold to me as unsexed and then after I bought it they were like, "Yeah, by the way, we think it's a male." <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I, it was unsexed. I've never given them any money. Yeah. <laughs> I will just... not be anymore. <laughs> yeah. But no, um so how many how many tree monitors have you hatched now just that clutch of blacks and greens yep just the one clutch of blacks and one clutch of greens and then i have two more clutches of blacks in the incubator right now and one more clutch of greens nice one of those set to hatch uh so my next round i think i've got about two months left to go until my next ones nice just make sure you don't you know cut them open 10 days oh earlier or anything <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was told I have to make fun of that. So. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. But yeah. um, no, that's. I know you had asked mm -hmm. with your last ones. Did you? Did they all end up getting out on their own? They did. Nice. Heck yeah. yeah. I think the last one. The <laughs> last one. I think I may have like. I think. No, it was with the greens where I ended up on one of them. I had, I ended up having to Nick because it was the last one and it had been several days. Really? Um, and so I just did like the tiniest little Nick in it just. To and then sure you found a nose happened. sticking out. If it lost its. Yeah. What? Oh, I said, and then you found a nose sticking out of that little slit a few hours later. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so my clutch that hatched last month. So. I've never actually lost a hatchling before ever, mm -hmm. like like a fully formed, full term baby. Never lost one until this clutch. Oh. Um, I I know confidently why it happened. This one egg just was not holding as much moisture as the others, mm -hmm. and I should have acted sooner. And like I I am just all about sphagnum moss. Like if it's yeah. too dry, put wet sphagnum. If it's too wet, put yeah. dry sphagnum. Yep. Um, it, I should have put. It's amazingly helpful. Yeah, I should have put sphagnum on it sooner. This egg started to shrink mm -hmm. like two months before it hatched, and then it never filled all the way back out to uh, the size of the others. So yeah. where the others are like this, this one was like this, like this much difference. And so like all the others hatched, and I noticed this egg starting to dent, and. I, I like almost wish I would have had it on video and like set up a tripod or something. Yeah. But when I cut this egg, the I cut it because I candled it and you could see like little lines on the inside of the egg where it was clearly trying to get out but couldn't. Yeah. And I cut it and this thing rushed its head out and was just like <gasps> <gasps> like gasping like, okay. for air. You were ready. Yeah. <laughs> um and it it just sat there gasping for air for like genuinely five to ten minutes oh. and so had i not cut it it would have suffocated it in the have egg. Made it. yeah yeah but so it hatched and it was so all of my other hatchlings are about 10 grams this one was yeah. six grams so it wow. was a it was runt. little yeah and so it it lived for about 48 hours the first day it was good second yeah. day i started noticing it like just sleeping all day and i'm like it's on its way out yeah third day i found it dead you in the morning tell. That sucks. Oh yeah. But yeah, like luckily, you know, I'm like 30 something hatchlings in, and that's my first one, but that's pretty damn good odds. Yeah, but still sucks. But at least I know why. Yep. I, I, I lost one of my Ackies. Um, and it was the opposite reason. It was the egg overhydrated. Too wet, yeah. Was it and sweating? No. So what happened was it just that the, it swelled too much. So there was mm -hmm. a lot of pressure inside the yeah. egg. And some of its organs came out through the belly button ball. Oh Jesus! From the okay. So I've it was, I've always it was entirely my fault. Right. I've always worried about that because I noticed like even my prasinous eggs. Like if I was to mm -hmm. pull these out of the incubator, 
they they swell so much they get stretch marks. <laughs> it's fucking wild. Yeah. Like on the eggs go from shaped like this to shaped yeah. like this. And on the yep. ends, they get like a little stretch. Yeah, but you get a little pointy toward the ends. Yeah. Yeah. But if they're not like that, for me anyway, they don't yep. hatch like as like full bellied and everything. Oh, yeah. So I feel like I'm skirting a really fine line of like, I mean, if it was any more, they would start to sweat and die. I think it's a fine line. I think it's also, you know, Aki's are a desert species. And so, right. you know, they're going to be more susceptible Moisture to difference. overhydration. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like greens are are probably going to be a little more susceptible to underhydration. And overhydration right. is probably exactly. not as big of a deal. Um, I know a couple people that were having issues with uh, Kimberly Rock monitors. Yes. Where, and this is on the scale of like hundreds of eggs, where they would all go full term perfectly fine mm -hmm. and then they would all die before they pipped every oh, one of them and i'm like i think they're overhydrated, dude because they look like plump yeah and i'm like maybe try venting it no matter what they did they couldn't get them to hatch wow. they, they had like genuinely hundreds of eggs go full term and never hatch oh, and like God. at at best they had one pip and die and like oh. never come out it's, it's so expression. bizarre but i'm like did you see Matt Cosman's whole post about the water crystals? No. Okay. So. So tell me because I've been using water crystals. Yeah. So let me, I'll have to look it up, but there was, um, uh, okay. He made this whole post about something in water crystals. I forget the property of it. It should be pretty easy to find. Um, okay. Oh, polymerized versus unpolymerized water crystals. And apparently, uh -huh. like, polymerized water crystals are totally fine. But okay. if so, they, it's something with, like, the way they make the water crystals. And so they're making them polymerized. But if somehow unpolymerized get in there, it's basically a neurotoxin. Oh, no. And Ooh, that's good to multiple know. people were getting basically Matt's the one that found it, Matt Cosman, Reptile Revolt. Um and he noticed he had multiple clutches in a row <clears throat> where basically what I just described would happen, where like they would all go full term, die in the egg, pip and die, or pip come out and die the next day. Oh wow. And so he made this post. Then Mike Stefani was like, that's crazy because I just had like Celebensis or something do the exact same thing. What brand water crystals were you using? And they were using the same brand. And Whoa. so I'm going to go do I, some excavating and find that post. That's yeah, um, I, can, wow. I can send it to you for sure. Um, but so basically, wow. Mike had lost a bunch of babies and he wasn't sure why either. He took out the water crystals. They immediately started hatching just fine. Oh, wow. So. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Now I'm going to do some digging on that one. Yeah. So in your SIM containers. Yeah. If, if that's what you're using. That's what, I'm, that's what I've been using in my SIMs. That's, I'm going to. I used to just do like perlite with water to stop, uh -huh. stop the sloshing. But I, I started noticing the water would have like a dry layer of perlite on it. And I started feeling like the eggs weren't getting as much hydration because of this yeah. like separation so i just do water now i do like three quarters to an inch of water yeah and that's, that's what I, I mean that's what i did with my ball pythons and, and mm -hmm. carpet pythons and stuff you just gotta not you know shoulder just, check your incubator and <laughs> slosh yeah, the water that's around the, that's the thing yeah because those but, eggs can handle a little extra moisture a little better than something that's incubating for forever yep yeah. but um but yeah that's, so that was uh, uh, good okay so you're using just water uh, yeah, I'm just doing water. straight RO water. Um, and then you're and good. then you're and then you're adding um and you're adding moss as you need to. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I uh typically when I need to add moss is one or two weeks after they lay. Yeah. And they're usually good after that, but if I notice like it always happens pretty quick. Like I'll I'll collect the eggs, put them in, and within like 3 to 5 days they start to dent. Mm -hmm. And if they start to dent, I just throw a wet moss on them. A week later, I take the moss out; they're fine. So you put the do you put the moss directly on them? I surround them with it. Okay. 
because I don't want them to like you don't want them to touch trap it with the, water. Right. Yeah, but yep. I, I surround it with it so that yep. there's still like air above and below. Yeah, that's what I've done a couple of times when I've had dents start to form and it's t- taking care of it really quick. Oh yeah, within like days. Yeah, yeah it's really nice. Um, I, yeah, and I've even done that recently with clutches where like mine go almost consistently 157 days on the dot um That's they had they start to hatch 157 they never go past 160 is that across species i've only hatched the greens. oh okay 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 yeah i i've i've collected so i was counting the other day i've collected something like 60 tree monitor eggs and i've i've hatched like 35 all from the greens so uh-huh. i've okay. i've collected like 25 fucking duds from other species oh. never a good egg yeah oh. Yeah, it's so so my greens took very similar amount of time and my blacks incubated longer. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, which for, at the same temperature, which I found was interesting. Right. I'm, I'm just yeah. And that, so I'm going to be I'll be curious to see hopefully my blues start producing before too long and oh, I know, some right. other species. Right. Oh, yeah. That um, not to, you know, jinx myself this early, but that blue that I just got from Brandon is already wall hanging. That's I've amazing. been putting the food to her so much and she's she's hanging so much already. That's she's awesome. eating like some like the big dubia like just before they're adults. She's eating like 15 to 20 of those and like five or six fuzzy mice and some grass. What? All she's since Tuesday. Pounding food. Yeah, all since Tuesday. Wow. So I got I got a an adult female from him too. Nice. Um, and yeah, she. I haven't been. I haven't been pounding her that much, but she ate a lot today. Yeah, yeah. He he just made a passing comment. He was like, "So she was hanging a little bit before I sent her." So uh, that's all. Awesome. You, you might awesome. be able to capitalize. So I'm like, I'm gonna. Try, <laughs> that's <man."> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she's she's fantastic. She has so much blue in her face. It's actually insane. That's neat. Yeah. So the one I haven't put, taken any pictures of the one I got yet, but she's like a really, really dark, almost like a navy blue. Oh, interesting. Like, okay. As opposed to like the bright blue. She's a wild caught that he was just like holding around to have an extra female around. Uh, and so I don't know. She's I haven't seen one with like quite the darkness to her blues before. So right. Oh, that's weird. I'm so curious to, to see. See what when there. I can help it, because like I. I kind of did this with my greens where I was like very selective with the ones that I bought. Yep. Um, like I, I, I wanted a specific look, right. Mm-hmm. Um, when I can help it and start collecting animals for a second or third pair of blues, I'm going to intentionally seek out like the highest blue content animals possible awesome. to see if I can, Just you know, pass get, that on. Yeah. Get more, more blue in the ratio right I mean, that's it, it, it's the, the, like, it's that's, the what, that's the the blues are what like excite people and right the more yeah you can get the better and like i don't it's not that i dislike them but like the super high black blues i'm just like i would rather have a black tree right agreed so I mean, I like if i want a blue tree better. i want it to have like an insane amount of blue yeah um it's it's definitely the green tree python keeper in me where i'm like i wonder right. if i can get this high thing and this high thing and smash it together <laughs> but i mean i'm i'm you know but that's what's fun right is 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 working those multi-generational projects and trying to like work toward different looks and all of that like that's super fun mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah and i'm like i haven't seen too many people try it yet so i'm like i don't even know how well it'll work yeah. so it, it's definitely a, a proving it out thing but I'm, I'm trying to work high blues into my greens nice and so I'm hoping I've got two animals that are really high blue. Well, Do you? three, because one of my babies hatched high blue. Um, oh, really? And that's going to be my whole back. Um, like, yeah. So I have three, I guess, counting that one. So what's interesting is um, when I first started hatching them, they were hatching like there. You can all, basically always tell an animal that I produced because it'll be blue neck down and then the head to screen. It's so strange. Interesting. Um, since the like fourth or fifth clutch, they uh-huh. turn green more often. But like the first three months, they're blue. Oh, and then interesting. They, they turn green. In- and, interesting. Yeah. So it would be something where you should definitely watch how your yeah watch and see what develops. happens to that one because it could just one day fucking 
bright. Yeah. Green. Well, so the the dad that produced that one is still blue as an adult. Um, right. But nice. But I'll be. But I'll keep an eye on the baby for sure. That's interesting to know. Right. Yeah. And I I had a lot of people that that were like early on like um, you know the carotenoid deficiencies like they see in chameleons and like the mm -hmm. green keel bellies um like telling me that i needed gut load better and i was like i'll up my gut load just to prove to you that that's not it right and those animals still stayed blue interesting it's, it's just i'm not sure what she does yeah but like i could feed them like the craziest gut loaded crickets dubia grasshoppers and they they maintain their color yeah it's it's so weird that's cool yeah but uh, yeah I, i've produced like what was really strange was the one that i sold to parker mm -hmm. or the one that i sold then parker bought that one was insanely blue it was like blue and white like all, all of its speckling on its back instead of being yellow was white that's crazy um he bought it had it for six months so it's a year and a half old turned green so it's almost like like OCC on right. It was it was so weird. That's interesting. Yeah, because it, it it wasn't even like right away when he got it. It took a yeah. while. Yeah. Well, but and, and she's like green now. Interesting. Mm hmm. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> yeah. I know for sure my male is not your typical Saron locale. Okay. Like his patterning and everything is totally different. Yeah. Um, I. I used to think my my female was so pretty, and I'm like, I actually kind of like my male more now. Like she's yeah. the typical sarong, just high blue. Yeah. Um, but his pattern is insane, and so like my holdback that I have is a female that looks very similar to him. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Let me see have, if I can. This, I'm gonna go and like creep on all your pictures and look at all these animals you're talking about. Right. Yeah. I uh, I'm not very good about. Um... <laughs> posting them so <laughs> don't worry about that um let's see yeah um, i wonder if i can add a file in here let's find out Ooh. i don't i don't know if i have any pictures of her on my computer um none that i can add it doesn't like my my photography files they're too oh, bad <laughs> um but yeah the uh they're they're awesome though. Yeah, I I so really fun. like them. I'm just glad they're staying social. I'm really excited to yeah. try to see if I can make hatchlings turn out as like of other species turn out as social as these ones are. That'll be really interesting to see. I mean, I feel like it should be possible. Right. Because yeah, no like my my wild greens aren't particularly well. No, I mean they're markedly different from the captives but they're not markedly different from any other wild caught species i have right so i would yeah so i would assume that it would generally be the same thing where you're just looking at something totally different oh yeah um my little black babies will climb all over my hands and stuff they're very fearless they like to let me rub their oh, seriously Mm -hmm. I can like rub on their chins and they're just that's awesome yeah. I so my strategy is I am just very very gentle with them the second they hatch like yeah. I know some people will kind of snatch them out of the sim just for safety mm -hmm. and put them in the enclosure mm -hmm. but like I'll crack open the lid and slide my hand in and I'll sit there for five minutes and let it decide to walk oh, on me wow. and then I take it out and if you just hold it in your palm like this with your hand up, it's uh -huh. not going to try to climb down. Yeah. So it'll just sit here and walk in circles in your hand, smell you, get used to you, and then give it 10 minutes of that, put it in the enclosure. Totally different animal. Interesting. I'm going to try that I, next time. I on. genuinely think that first 10 minutes just yeah. totally it settles them to you and, that, and they know that you're safe that from that point yeah. on. They're like imprinting on you or something. Ba yeah, right. But <laughs> that's yeah, that's, that's all, that's like, the main thing that I do other yeah. than just like sticking my hand in there. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what I usually do is just stick my hand in and let them like get brave and come check it out and, you know, give, give them right. like a little cricket or something. But, but like, um, that's cool. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Definitely. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to hear. Um, 
See. Whereas my like gr green babies are com like, little kamikazes. They like, I open up the door to the enclosure and they just like fling themselves out. They're crazy. Really? Oh, um, <laughs> like, like social ish? Or no, just like psychos? they just like, just psycho fling themselves. Oh no. <laughs> oh God. Usually they're on me and it's fine. And one of them, one of them is the one that I'm holding back is pretty comfortable with me at this point. But Heck yeah. Um, but the uh yeah they're they're nuts all right um let's see if this works i gotta try to i want to show you this this hold back of mine and it's so weird because like directly under the grow light it looks this blue but like under more of like the basking light it looks way more green which is one of the reasons why I threw grow lights into everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go. Oh, oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. Oh so... yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, she is awesome. So this was two months ago. Um, she's grown so much. I last month upgraded her to a three and a half by two and a half by five foot enclosure. And she is just all over it. Like that's so cool. It is. So, it is for sure her space. The thing I'm noticing on her is is you were talking. You mentioned how green the heads are, but like yeah, it's yeah, a green like head, it's not a yellow head. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And like, so one thing I've noticed too with my offspring, my female has that white face. Uh -huh. All of my females that I hatch have that white face. Interesting. And it's just the females that you hatch. Yeah. Huh. Just the females have this white face and they have like a really large um like bridge on their nose. It's like really pronounced. Uh whereas the males just have like the flat face. But yeah, she's um she's nuts. Her pattern is so freaking cool, man. I love that animal. Definitely, really definitely cool. my hold back, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yep. awesome. So, so you have a pair of blacks that you're a female that you're currently pairing there. Do you, you have this new blue? Do you have any other blues that you're currently going with, or is this is you the just first? just the pair of blues? So I had I've had a male for a year, and just sitting on him, waiting for yep. something to have. He is a psycho, dude. Is he? He? I am not kidding. He took food off tongs for the first time yesterday. <laughs> I was so excited. I shrieked and my really? roommate came running up like, what happened? And I'm like, oh my God. He took off dogs. I'm, I'm just excited. I'm sorry. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. It was, he, so he like has buttered his whole top lip to where his face is like this, well, uh, like, like this shape now. Okay. Uh, so he has like a massive underbite, uh -huh. um, from rubbing his nose on the glass. Mm -hmm. And, I swear the blues are the most notorious to do that. I've so I did I picked up a pair um from someone who was getting out of the hobby and both of the blues had like significant nose rub on them. They do it so much. It's yeah. so weird. Um but yeah, he's he's an animal where even in a four by three by six, yeah. Um I open the door and if he's up here, he sprints, hits this wall, dives to the ground, hits this wall, <laughs> runs up, hits this wall slams into the light fixtures oh he's a psych stop, buddy even after a year of keeping yeah him. and uh yeah it's, it sucks and so yeah. i have to just like sneak in set his food down walk away yep i I've, I've, I've i think i've seen him eat three times and eat. <laughs> you like judge based off of how the little dish is looking and how the belly's looking you're like okay, yeah this is good <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Oh my god, it's it's so stressful because I've never had an animal take this long to tongue feed. Yes. Usually, it's like one to two months. Wow. Because like I will I will put in so much extra effort to get them tongue feeding. Like I will get on the ground with these like three foot forceps uh -huh. and just like hide over here and put it up. <laughs> and if you do that a few times and they see your arm, they start to get used to it. Yep. And then you can expose yourself more. Yep. But even that with this dude doesn't work. It's I'll so spend a boring. lot of time just like sitting in front of the cage, just like sitting there with a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So they're used to me being there. I'll open up the door a little bit and just be like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. And then 
after like doing that for a while, then I can grab the tongs. And usually by that point, they're not just like terrified of my presence. Right. Usually, yes. Yeah. So he was in my living room for a year. Oh, wow. Still nutcase. Crazy. Yeah. And when and what's really weird is he won't sleep in a hide. He sleeps on the back wall. Huh. Go figure. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. They're weird. There's yeah. They're, they're weird. weird. My my green tree female won't lay in her lay box. She lays underneath her lay box. She, she lays in the dirt underneath it. I have heard a few people say that. I I think they like the tight space way more. Yep. I think that's. So I don't think I'm revolutionizing anything with this cork tube that I use for the nest box. I think I just check one of the boxes, which is they like tight space. They like the they like the tight fit. Yeah. I yeah. I really really think that. Yeah. Um. So I've had two female cordensis, the yellow and my green all lay in a cork tube. Wow. Over choosing a tub. Interesting. So I, I made up, I made up a cork tube to use. So I'm going to next time yeah. I'm going to offer both. I have a new girl. I'm going to offer both. Nice. Yeah. The way I do mine too, I don't put any heat on it, like directly on it. So okay. what I do is. Like I set up my enclosures to where the basking is uh, mounted above the enclosure, right? Uh -huh. Um, and then so the basking spots, let's say they're here. Yeah. I will put the lay box right below the basking. Okay. And I will like mount so it into the enclosure, and so that way it's getting the residual heat from the the basking, and so yeah. then it's also, you know, naturally heated downwards, so they can dig away from the heat. Yeah. So it's a lot more organic. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, and so they all like it. Um, the most recent one that I'm using has an actual entryway that's about this big around. Oh, and so they have to actually go into a tight spot, but then it opens up into this big cork tube. Yeah. So it it's it's working. I, I'm that's still going to try with that black tree to add a couple more options. Yeah, so I think options for one, for one thing. that isn't hasn't like proved themselves yet. I feel like right. options, options are never a bad thing. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying to figure out how to go about it. One thing that I've been talking about with Parker too is I would like to just for the sake of being stubborn because <laughs> I never do anything how everybody else does. Yeah. Um so you know the typical nest box people put the heat on the side or on the bottom. Yeah. I'm going to do a double lid and put the heat in the top and so it heats downwards. Interesting. That's so that's a really good idea because then it like i said it's going to be more natural because yep. if you look at how some of these females react let's say you have this tub right and your entryway is over here if yep. your heat's over here she's going to go in put her nose into it and go this is cold i'm not using this and leave she's not yep. going to check anything else yep and so if the heat's up here she's going to put her nose in and go oh it's too hot and go down yep so it, it's 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 I don't know. It makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 it makes sense that that would also kind of be the way that the temperature gradient right. in the wild would work. So, yep. Um, but yeah, that's hopefully I get to try that out with like the blue or something soon. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Did you Sounds see like that? Uh, did you see that really planted enclosure that I made? I did. The, her new enclosure? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's insane. It made me feel a little bad about what my life was living in. I'm not going to lie. I so was like, I'll, shit, I need to up my game. I'll pull it up here. Um, I'm obsessed with this thing. I also left, you can't tell very well, but I left just enough space at the front of it to where I could fit a, a, like a tub into it for a nesting. Nice. Um, God, that's incredible. I yeah, love, so, so I really, really love those big platforms up high. Those are really nice. Yep. So those are driftwood. Oh. Uh, just pulled them out of a lake, set them on my, my deck for the entire summer so they can get wow. like real baked dry, um, sprayed them with a hose, scrubbed them clean a few times. Wow. And then I actually like screwed them together so they don't move. Wow. Um, here you can see the plaque though. I I noticed that on it. That's really um, neat. So do you see that yellowish branch middle left? Yes. Going from the left wall to the back? Mm -hmm. I mounted that there so I can set my nest box in that. Oh, wow. 
So that is like a stable spot that I can insert my nest box into and then pull it back out of. Oh, wow. That's really cool. There's but so yeah, much thought in that. That's video. incredible. Yeah. I, I've i never planted an enclosure like this before. Wow. Um, but yeah, so I, I have palms in here. There's a Shiflura, um, which is that one there. And then there's like a silver sword violin. And then this is called like a Philodendron Brazil. Uh huh. Super cool plant. It's it's basically a pothos, just more colorful. And uh, yeah, I, wow. I love this thing. I I need a video now that she's in there. But... Yeah, I would be I would be so interested to see how she uses the space. Yeah, all over that branch that's uh, at the very front of it. She just sits up on top. Of yeah, it and doesn't move. And just yeah. hawk eyes everybody. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Watch. I, I am I'm turning into a huge proprietor of. I want everybody to do plants with them. <laughs> I haven't done them yet. I'm not gonna lie. Plants scare me. Oh, that, I do fake I, plants. Yeah. Oh, I I I get that. I totally do. Me. It's this is a year and a half, almost two years in the making of figuring out how to keep them alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two biggest things was get a good grow light. Uh-huh. Reduce how much I'm misting, but add way more substrate so I could spray more at one time. Okay. So I was doing like eight inches of substrate before. Now I'm yeah. doing like 16 to 20 inches. Whoa. And so now instead of spraying like one to two gallons of water, I'm spraying like five gallons of water at a time. Holy and and I'm just doing shit. it one to two times a week. That's wild. That's so much substrate. Mm -hmm. wow. But that's what's keeping those plants alive. Like right. that, that substrate dam and that enclosure is two feet tall. And so that's filled within like six inches of the top. And wow. so plants do so much better. They, they add humidity, they purify the air in it. Like there's so many beneficial qualities to it. Like all of my hatchlings are plants oh, and I, everything. I have no doubt. Like there, there have got to be many, 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 many beneficial reasons to have right. them in there. Listen, um, let me know if, and when you ever want to get into plants. Okay, <laughs> I'm just, still you know. it's, at some point. I'm sure I'll, I'll take the plunge because it needs to happen. Someone was telling me to try money trees. Was it you? Yeah, I, I started using money trees too. They're they're very helpful. Definitely, definitely very helpful. Um, here is actually I'm just gonna post it now. Um, it's uh, Thrive Ecosystems. That's the grow lights that I use. Oh, okay. freaking love them. They are. I'm not kidding. That four by six enclosure. Yeah. It is a two foot grow light lighting up that entire. Damn. Thing. It is super, super nice. It's one of my friends locally here that makes them. What what are your what's what kind of times do you have on your grow lights? Uh so the grow light is um I'm trying to think. So because I have the grow light now, now I don't run UV all day. Now I run UV from like noon or from like ten AM to like four PM. Wow. And so then I do the grow light from nine AM until eight PM. Okay. And so that's my actual like As LED like for the enclosure. And okay. then I can, you know, turn off and on the bastings as I want from there. Yeah. It's it's very nice. What what are you doing for your light schedule? So I'm so I'm super boring on all my stuff right now. I'm like basically eight AM to eight PM. Mm -hmm. Lights on, lights off. That's it. It works. I, I haven't done any temp cycling on any of my stuff yet. That's fair. At some point, if I need to, I'll have it in my back pocket as something I can do. Right. Um, but I figure the simpler I can keep it to start, the better, and then I'll fine tune as needed. Oh yeah, I don't think it's mandatory to find uh, to to temp cycle. I just think yeah. if nothing's happening, it's oh for sure. You know, for sure. It's, it's like I literally stole that from like again green tree python people. Like, yep. I I basically took what they do with their like dropping night temperatures, slightly dropping day temperatures. Yep. Um. And then like dropping or raising food. And I, I just basically mimicked that, but with lizards. Yeah. No, I mean, and, that's what I did with carpet pythons. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. Heck yeah, I mean, no, that's awesome. At, at, the, at the equatorial kind of latitudes, you're basically, I mean, they're not necessarily having temperature seasons. It's really just wet season and dry season. Yeah, um, pretty but much. But again, it's just one of those things that can change Mm -hmm. 
what they're I, used to. And sometimes it just takes changes to kind of get oh, them yeah. out of the rut. I feel like they're far enough-ish away from there to where they are still getting a little bit of a change temperature-wise. Yeah. Just not a huge change. Like, yeah. I've, I've seen... Um, I've seen field work of people saying night temps will get down to an average of like 65 to 68 every night. Yeah. And then, and it still rains just as much, but instead of night temps being 73, 74, it gets down into the sixties. And yeah. And so I, I notice when I drop my temperatures there, I get a little bit better production. Interesting. So yeah. I feel like my house just kind of naturally does that in the various yeah. seasons though. Anyway, like, cause I don't have anything on at night. Right. So at night Same. in the winter, it's going to be a little bit cooler. In the summer, it's going to be a little bit warmer at night, just by virtue of my house not being exactly the same. Right. Time. No, and so what's so funny about that is this year, uh, or this, this like, last winter here, um, yeah. I even made a post and I was like, hey, get ready to see people talking about <laughs> animals breeding that have never bred before. Yeah. Because people's houses are getting colder their floors are getting colder that's yep. going into the enclosures yeah so every november and december you see people i finally got breeding and i'm like it's because you you <laughs> <laughs> i've been saying it for three years people yeah <laughs> yeah yep. but no it, it's still cool to see though and it's being able to predict it it's it's kind of you know being able to predict something is what helps you recreate it so this is exactly right yep this is exactly right. And then once it's like, and then once you figure out a recipe, it's like you just keep reproducing that as much as you can because you don't right. do anything. And then you get to Brandon scale. Yeah, right. <laughs> God. Yeah. My, my, have, have you thought about or heard of Monitor Fest yet? I have. Um, it's I don't out know at Brian Waterloo's house. Or not. Say, say that again? Brian Waterloo, the guy that breeds lace yeah. monitors. Yeah. So it's out at his place. Oh, a dang. lot of fun. I've been to both of them. I should, a... I should try to go. I think I get back from a trip like right around that weekend. But I nice. might. Yeah, it's, it's the... Labor right or Memorial Sorry. Day weekend. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's on a Sunday. I'm... I'm okay kind of trying to convince i think i may have done it but trying to convince parker to fly out to omaha the oh, weekend wow. of check out the zoo and then ride out there with me oh that would be so, so fun yep so we're we're trying to make a a whole weekend out of it but that would be fun yeah but brian's place he has a really really nice his i think his his like shed warehouse whatever that he has yes. in it's like 60 by 110 or something it's huge wow. yeah and, and it's just like collectibles and figurines and then lace monitors <laughs> unbelievable yeah it, it's so cool though but i'm just like i would love to get to that scale someday but i so, see i got to that kind of scale with snakes and i uh -huh. never want to get to that kind of scale ever really <laughs> yeah so what's funny is he only has like six animals in there Oh, well, but they're lace monitors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he has one enclosure that's like, it's like ten by ten by like eighteen tall. Oh my god, how amazing! And, and guess what he put in it? Hmm. Water dragons. <laughs> yeah, Chinese water dragons. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Dude is uh, he? He's a character. That's for sure. He's awesome though. So uh, I live pretty close to Reptilandia. Okay. Um, so some of their, they have these like huge two story kind of enclosures for some, like for the cock monitors and um, for the, I think the lace monitor one is two story. And they also have a two story one for the, um, for their tree monitors. And oh, really? The thing that's really interesting to me is um, every time I've gone, the blue tree monitor is at the very tippy top of the two story enclosure right. just hanging out at the very top and i don't know if it's dead because that's closer to did i lose you today i lost her there we go yeah oh there you go yep sorry anyways you're saying right. it's always at the very top yeah it's always at the very top and i just i and it's like i don't know if it's the heat or if it's just they want to be up in the canopy no matter what so all of the like Chris Applin stuff, seeing him in the wild and everything, yeah. they always see him 15, 20 feet up. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I wonder if it's just like, 
I wonder what the temperature difference is like up there. Like, I like, is it like slightly different humidity? Like, are they ba yeah. like better basking abilities up there? Like, it's it's pretty yeah, I mean, interesting. I I because like I go on photography trips and I've spent enough time in jungles. I haven't been to anywhere in Indonesia yet, but like in the Amazon and Central America, like in the jungles, like or in Africa too. Like, but it um it's always like kind of cool and super humid like when you're down like mm -hmm. on the ground level but then like i think it's really different as you as you change elevation right and so um you know so i think if you're basing things off of what what we experience as people at the ground level it's probably really different than right oh yeah i assume so you know yeah yeah that would be that would be really interesting um, I also had no idea until recently. So, like, I knew other reptiles were on Batanza, right? Yeah. But did you know there's also peach throats, blue tails, and croc monitors on Batanza? I knew about the peach throats. I did not know about the others. Yeah, That's it's cool. it's. Tr I think there's even mangrove monitors there. Like, there's there's wow. a lot, and there's a locale of green tree python there too, for sure. I did not know that. It's it's weird. I had no idea. Oh, that's, until... that's fascinating to me that there's a locale of green tree. Yeah, and and it's it's because it's such a tiny island. I think right. it's something like I don't remember the exact. I think it's something like three, maybe half to three quarters of a mile wide, and then like four miles long. And that's yeah, it. that's such a small it's island. It's tiny. Yeah. And yeah, and and they have all of that there. That's it's crazy. so weird. That's crazy. What do you think is going to happen with the blue tree stuff? Oh, dude, I don't know. It's yeah, because like obviously, you, well, are you talking about like the ESA stuff? Like I the, am, I yeah. am. So if it's anything like the eastern indigos or the yeah. indigo snakes in general, yep. I don't think it would be bad. I'm not even entirely opposed to it. Yeah. Um, but the issue is the indigos obviously are native. Right. I don't know how they would try to regulate that with non-native. I mean, literally, it's just the the language of the the language of the statute is just that you can't sell across state lines, right? And so there are ways to like trade animals for non-breeding purposes, but um, it basically shuts down to whatever is in your given state at the time it goes into effect. That's right. The, for the most part, that's the breeding stock you've got in your state. Right. But what's interesting, though, is that's the same because they're calling it the Endangered Species Act. Right. That's the exact same thing indigo snakes are under. And with indigos, you just get a $50 permit and wait three months and you can sell them over state lines. Oh, interesting. I did not know that part. Yeah. So you you just need a permit. Huh. And it's just for interstate travel. That's the only yeah. reason of the permit. So Randy just commented that it would be similar to Jamaicans, which I have Jamaicans and generally people like, well, I had them and I'm selling them, but it would be like, um, like you can only sell them inside the state that you're in. Really? Uh, mm hmm So how do people even get Jamaican boas then? They got them somehow. Somehow, it, yeah. It could be, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they could have yeah. been. It, back when days were sketchier or before they oh yeah and or went on the list or they but were so at an institution that had them and then someone got yeah. babies from them inside that state or all the weird ways that animals get into the hobby so there's uh, no way of legally transporting jamaican boas across can, state lines you can legally transport them across but it would be like a gift to someone interesting you can't charge money for a sale charge money <laughs> no yeah, yeah. No, I know, that's, I know i know yeah but so anyway it's, crazy. Yeah, it's, it's um but i just, so what if what if the person that takes it as a gift then ends up trying to breed it um there could potentially be, i don't know anything about how it's actually enforced that's super weird if, if you're looking at the language of the law like it, it would have to be it would be for non-breeding purposes but right. then I don't know how you hold the person accountable once they have it. Like, but also if you're concerned about something being endangered, wouldn't you want people breeding it? Why? Why do you want to? That's give I know. Away pet it's, only? it's it's really it's really it's really that's like about it. it's a law that's not supposed to apply to. Um, there. So yeah, Randy said gift yeah. across state lines, but then sell within the state. Yeah, that's fair. 
that's, um, yeah, that's so counterproductive. Yep. Like the exact opposite of what we want. Yep. But so, it, I mean, it's like, it kind of makes sense for stuff that's native to the US at least, but like right. for stuff that's not native to the US is like, I appreciate wanting to protect animals that have a very, very small island and all that kind of stuff. Right. But it's, it's a law that doesn't seem crafted toward dealing with that particular. No. Purpose. Yeah. Not to mention it's like, part of the reason why they have such a small or part of the reason why they're being considered possibly endangered is because it's just a small Island. So they yeah. already have a small count to begin with. Yep. But then even further on that, they're not even as far as r recent things that I've read is concerned. Anyway, mm -hmm. they are much more in danger of becoming endangered, not from like, uh, smuggling or collection, but from, yeah, deforestation issues. Yeah. I forget like what palm oil or something like yep. some of the oil stuff. Um, that is much more of an issue for them than collection is. Yeah. So what is going to happen if we basically shut down people being able to captive breed them right. and then they die in the wild. Yep. So then they just don't exist anymore. Like, that that's completely counterproductive. I agree. I know I, I'm preaching to the gospel here, but. but like I just, I just, yeah, I, it's, I just, I don't know. I'm still holding out hope that they decide not to include them because there's not adequate data. Right. Um, because right now we don't know how many blue tree monitors there are in the wild. There's no data on it. No, there's not. Yeah. And, and what I know, at least through, again, Chris Applin's documentation yeah. is like, they found blue trees really easy. Yes. What I hear and he was, and he, through him and a couple other sources, have basically said like, yeah, there's still parts of the island that haven't even been collected from. Yeah. They they basically just have these zones that they collect from, and they don't even touch these other places. Yeah. And so like that like far northern peak of the island, like I don't even think they've touched that part. And so, who knows how they're doing there? Mm -hmm. But that also brings me to, have you seen the um increase in number of blue trees coming in with green backs on them have you ever no, seen those i have not so, there, seen them. so there's blue trees that have like an actual like all of the blue patterning on their back is actually like green um Weird. i had one and i had a couple friends get them all at the same time and we started thinking that maybe they're collecting from a new area and so uh -huh. there actually might be like a locale of blue tree or if there's green trees, could they be integrates? Right. I have no idea. Interesting. It's, it's, it's very weird. But yeah, it's it's just... So what's really weird about it is their blues on these yeah. animals are way more vibrant. And then their back, just their back pattern. It's still the same pattern. Yeah. The same it's ocelot. Awesome. It's just pretty green. Weird. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they're they're blues like the face and everything way more vibrant. Wow. They're like neon under certain light. It's it's very cool. Wow. The the female that I bought last February was what had that, and of course she died in two of weeks. Of course. Yeah. But, yep. The old you know Switalski treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all been there? Yep. Yeah. Now now that I got my. Uh, my final animal from him and kind of broke even not really mm -hmm. i'm like i'm finally like all right i'm i'm done keeping my mouth shut fuck that guy <laughs> god yeah that was that was a nightmare um female showed up with a respiratory infection and then two weeks oh, later no two weeks later died and my vet said with certainty like betting his degree on it He's like, this animal died from panic here. I don't, I, I don't care what anybody yeah. says. She died from oh, panic. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. No. So, um, so I have a really, really good reptile vet who's a hobbyist and, um, nice, like, same. like really, really knows his shit. And like, we just like geek out over reptiles. Like he books me at the end of one of his, uh, days so that he can just sit down and we can chat for 45 minutes. Heck yeah. And, and um, yeah, he, he like, my general philosophy is it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And so I usually don't deworm. Right. No, because it, it's like they're surviving in the wild with, with right. these parasites, right? Right. And so something is causing them to not survive with it. 
It's mm-hmm. just their immune system and how well you support them. Well, and, and if, if you get really stressed out, they're not, their body's not going to be able to keep it all in balance anymore. Right. And, and what's so, really stressful moving from across yeah. the world. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Plus like the amount of dehydration they go mm-hmm. through and lack of food they go through getting yep. shipped. Yep. Um, but so like I've done a couple times now where I will fecal an animal right the day it shows up and then uh-huh. fecal it again three months later without any dewormer and yep. they have significantly less parasites. I believe it. I believe and it. it's just from supporting their immune system and getting them healthy. They can yep. rid themselves of it most of the time. Yep. Um, my So my vet, so it's his name is Dr. Merkwan. Mm-hmm. He was a vet at the Henry Dorley Zoo and then oh, wow. went more private practice and... Um, he does house calls and everything for me. That's so awesome. He's super, super nice. Um, he is, uh, he, this dude teaches me so much, but he, um, when this happened, was talking about how it's, it's a newer discovery ish, but basically reptiles die or reptiles process dewormer the way birds do mm-hmm. where cats and dogs, you can give them dewormer. 10 times a day and they're fine yeah. but birds even on a proper dosage can like nuke them yeah um and he said reptiles are the same but the reason why people haven't noticed it in reptiles is because you don't see symptoms of it till four to six weeks after the dose um and so by the time that happens they're like oh it couldn't possibly they're attributing it to something else yeah. yeah and so what what ends up happening is um most of the time it's just it's just like lethargy right yeah. Um, but if this animal is again dehydrated, underweight, respiratory infection, any other infections, so let's um, nuke its body. Great timing. Yeah. Um, four to six weeks after the dose, they can get uh bone marrow suppression. Oh wow. And and the bone marrow suppression in extreme cases causes anemia and organ failure, and that's what kills wow. them. And so it's very easy to find on a necropsy if that's what did it. You cut open like a femur. Yeah. And break it open, and you can see it's hollow. Oh wow! Yeah, I I had him do the necropsy wow. on her, yeah. and uh, he, I still have the photos of it. It is hollow, and so he That's could say with certainty, crazy. It's "Panic here!" Wow. Yep. So now I'm like absolute last resort. If I'm going to deworm this animal, it's going to be like peak condition right. before I do it. Right. Because that's the only way to be safe about it, you know. Yep. But yeah. Um. I was wanting to ask you what other um, what other projects are you wanting to get into anyway? So um, I think for now I'm at least space wise and, and most other things I'm about all I can handle. I have I have a female pillbara that I'm thinking about getting a male for, or I'm thinking nice. about calling her. I go back and forth on that. I would love to get into Cornensis someday. They're amazing and I love them. And Do it. Do I want it. to do that. And obviously, like. You know, golden spotteds are freaking crazy. I don't have that kind of money in my life right now. Um, but listen, you know, the car I just bought with the right people, and they want right. something I have. We can work out a deal. I don't know. Right. Listen, the car I just bought, I could have used that money and bought less than a pair of gold spotteds. Right. Right. <laughs> that would have sure. paid for like three quarters of a pair. Like for sure. And I just, in general. Like, and I've always been this way. Like there's kind of a threshold where I don't want to put money, that kind of money into something that's a living thing that could drop dead. Tomorrow. Like, yeah. Right. That scares the shit out of me. So, um, yeah. so uh, yeah, I would, I would get spending that money on captive bred stuff. Wild yeah. is sketchy. So yeah. I mentioned the yellow that died. Yeah. And, um, she, uh, like I said, the the pathologist said like it was likely a lot of issues that happened before she was imported, and that mm-hmm. just like like wore her down. And she's been in the states for probably nine years. Um, <clears throat> another really good example of like why wild caught is sketchy. So you know how I mentioned I had that um, Jayapura green tree python. Yeah, so she died also. Mm-hmm. Um, we. Sh- so she was in our care for three or four years prior to us. She was in the care of Frank Fast, the gecko guy. Uh-huh. Um, he had her for three or four years, at least. So she was in the States for probably seven. Uh, 
she was probably in the States for six and a half to seven years. And I think she was imported as like a young animal, like pretty okay. young, like a juvenile. Yeah. Um, she just randomly one day drooping on her perch really hard, starts biting at her own side and then dies. And so we did a necropsy. Yeah. And that's like, yeah, she has um, necrosis around her side, which caused sepsis and organ failure. And we're like, that's what? wild. So he sent off tissue samples to a pathologist and the pathologist is like, yeah, there's, um, I'm not talking about tree monitors, by the way. And sorry, the, the comment. No, I've, uh, when you keep a lot of animals, you're bound to see death. Uh, that's just kind of the, the, mm -hmm the run of it especially when you're dealing with wild cots it's well and especially if you're getting very very fresh wild caught that have not been established yet yeah. but this i mean this yeah. just kind of yeah. goes to this story i'm telling will kind of give you more context yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um sent off tissue samples to a pathologist and um they sent back yeah she had plant matter in her side and we're like we don't keep any plants with her like, what are you talking about plants like thorns or something? And they're like, yeah. So they sent off samples to somebody else and identified she had a thorn or some type of plant matter in her side from Indonesia from before she was imported, That's sat awesome. in her side for seven years, finally flared up, caused necrosis and killed her. That's wild. So, yeah, it's nuts. But yeah, I, I share wow. that stuff to warn people about the risk of wild caught. Like, yep. I've never had a, a captive bred animal die on me. Not that I have a whole lot of captive bred, but like there's always yeah. a risk with them, you know? Yep. But also like I I could sit here and talk about successes all day, but I'd rather tell people how I could improve or, you well, know, things to be aware of. And I think, you know, being realistic about this is hard. Like, you know, there are things that happen. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, I I, I talked to somebody at Tinley. I can't remember who, but they, they were basically just like, uh, you know, if it lives, it dies. It's, yeah. it, it's bound to happen. Yeah. Every, everything dies eventually. Yep. Nope. Which was kind of crazy in the context of it, but yeah, it was uh, no, it, it was pretty eye opening. Like you, you can't expect stuff to live forever, especially wild caught animals that you don't know the history well, on. You know, if you think about how many wild caught animals have been imported over the past decade, I mm -hmm. would venture to guess that a large number of those animals are no longer with us. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the other things too is just like talking to other monitor breeders and stuff just realizing um uh hey yeah so sorry i i will go back to the dewormer topic yeah I, no i just um, saw that comment too yeah um god what was i saying I, I space now sorry <laughs> I, adhd we were just talking about adhd the other day i know, know. I but know. uh oh no so like just monitor breeders and stuff in general talking about like if you import a wild or like if you buy a, an animal that was like already an adult when it was imported mm -hmm. odds of that animal actually being like reproductively active and well is so low just because they've been through so much more trauma in the wild and importing yeah. and so yeah. if you buy like young wild caught stuff you have a way higher chance of this animal like yeah. doing everything by the book as you expect and yeah. and so recently i've been trying to focus a lot more on buying younger animals even though three years ago i'd have been like i'm so sick of buying young animals i just want adults <laughs> right now yeah yeah um so dewormer works on per pounds i use dog dewormer on white throat there yet yeah so Measy. Um, regardless of if you give something a proper dosage, there's still a risk, is what I was saying, is there's still a risk of panic here having adverse effects. Um, so, Amy, um, basically, 
panic here will always have a possibility of having a, a bad reaction with your animal just because reptiles there there hasn't been a dewormer created yet that is actually a hundred percent safe for reptiles um and so like most dewormers that we're using like do you know what most people use for like green tree pythons and stuff they go to tractor supply and buy goat dewormer yep and then they just extract like the proper dosage and have to do the math and figure out like per yeah, weight i have i have a book for calculating dosages yeah same um and so like it's great and all it gets the job done if it's really needed but there's always a risk of um even with a proper dosage of that animal dropping from it yeah. and and most vets unfortunately aren't even aware of it yet yep so it's i'm sure you know give it a couple years but like one of the biggest things that my vet always preaches is just like reptiles are 15 years behind birds scientifically and then birds are another 15 to 20 years behind cats and dogs that's a really good point and so we're still just playing catch up year over year just trying to well, get the amount of info that they have on the other and then cats are one species dogs are one species like right. reptiles <laughs> yes a much bigger group. yeah no kidding and then localities right. and like this reptile is from indonesia and this one's from south america and like yep so many curveballs get thrown into the equation yeah well i'm going to turn the question you asked a little while ago back to you what are, are there any other projects you want to get into yeah so i'm basically at capacity yeah, I feel <laughs> um, that <hard. laughs> so i've i've been toying with the idea recently um so do them I'm I'm not sure. Sorry, I was reading the comment. Yeah, again. you're good. Due to the import I... tree monitor, still giving me a run for my money. Ton flicking at least now. Mm. Oh no, I remember who you are. No, that's good, man. Um, yeah, he had a an import that was just like not moving from a from a hide and just oh no, just sitting still. She didn't look too bad, so I'm pretty hopeful for her. like yeah hopefully. the the one that i told you in the rep debris looked way worse okay and so she pulled through so i'm i'm sure she'll yeah. she'll come around um but no uh like i said i'm basically at capacity and what sucks is i've been like kind of thinking about getting into some geckos probably not for the right reason more so just like <laughs> man i need table fill I need something I that'll well, that's why pay I for my these. table cost. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I just need something that'll pay my table cost. But so the issue is my house in the summer, my AC sucks so goddamn bad oh. that like my house in the summer hits 80 to 83 every yes, day. Yes, you're getting toasty for a lot of geckos. Yeah. Like most geckos that I'm interested in couldn't handle it. They don't. Yeah. And so like maybe if I can figure out my AC issues, I would get into a couple of the different like leaf tail species I, Ooh, I think those are really cool like satanic leaf yeah tails. yeah oh, i i like those a lot um yeah. always the obscure shit you know never oh, of course of course i gotta be difficult everywhere of course um <laughs> that goes without saying yeah but no i have uh so i have the well i guess i like four it was four cordensis hoping i get at least one pair out of that so i have an enclosure reserved for them eventually that's awesome and then i have another enclosure space reserved for gold spotted yeah so eventually i'll get into those yeah um but i have no idea you know, I know. um i i'm not ready to drop eight thousand dollars per animal so yeah yep. same <laughs> same and yeah. you, you, do you think you're just done with yellows at this point until i have more space yeah like i would rather have that i think i broke his heart when i told him but i told because parker's favorite tree monitors of the yeah yellow, and i'm like i would rather have green blues or i would rather have blue greens than yellow greens so i didn't and get yellows, yellows just for a long time because i was like they're just ugly green tree monitors <laughs> that's literally what i say oh my god and he gets I have, so I have mad them here now and they're like highlighter green and i mean they're they're really bright and they're cool and i like them but i'm just gonna stick with the one pair right but yeah like i would rather have a set like my hold back pair of greens a second or third pair of cordensis a second yeah. pair of blues than a single pair of yellows 
Yeah. And so like when I can have more space and have like a small building, like Brian Susan, mm-hmm. if I can get something like he has, um, like a like an actual tree monitor building. Yeah. Um, then I'll end up getting another pair of yellows, but till then, like I'm good that on them sense. now, you know. That makes sense. Yeah. Um. But so uh, the blues that you got. Yeah. Uh, how old are they? So so I got a I got two females this past t- time from Brandon, um, an adult female, and then I got a grow up female that's like I don't know maybe five months old or something like that still pretty young um so but i have i have four i have 4.4 total um holy shit do you really i do but i two of them two of them only two of them are adult pairs so oh damn i got only 2.2 um well that's way more than i got but i had to i had to reconfigure some things um i and and really it was just psa stuff that made me i wasn't even planning on doing blues as moving into blues as quickly as I did, but I, the ESA thing kind of made me right. um, jump the gun a little bit. A yeah. Would have otherwise. No, that's fair. Yeah. yeah so I, uh, I have the most of most of any of them are, are blues right now. So I've got all, I've got all of crazy. those. I've got two adult pairs of, of blacks. Plus I just got two new babies from Brandon. I have my babies. Heck yeah. Um, and then I have another female adult. Um, and then I've got my greens and then I've got a grow up pair of greens. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what I've, what I've got tree monitor wise. That, yeah, that's wild. That's yeah. so many more blues than I expected. It's, stu- it's stupid. Um, it's too, it's too many blues, but I was like, I just, I did at first they, I <clears> couldn't <throat> find females at the time I started buying. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to have to get unsexed and see what I end up with. Right. And so, then- well for me i know we talked about it the other day yeah. but um you'll have to keep me posted on what your hatchlings end up looking like sex wise yeah i will I'm still I, i'm trying to gather info from more people on how heavily they produce females yeah that's super interesting to me yeah so so basically for those listening um we were talking about how most wild cots that come in, and this could just be a product of, like we said earlier, people hoarding females yep. and selling males. Um, but it seems like stuff that comes in is very male heavy. Like yes. I saw a, a shipment of Cordensis come in of 12 animals and all 12 were male. Yes. And then eight gold spotted and all eight were male. Yes. And so what's interesting is most breeders report having like 75 percent or more females and so i'm wondering where not that i'm complaining but i'm yeah. wondering where the disconnect is right like, i think it could be temp related maybe it's dietary who knows who knows yeah because you would think so like for for so i was thinking more when we had that conversation so a lot of my friends who do geckos it's not that they get like more females at a given temperature than males they get all females at that temperature that they right exactly it's not not entirely the same mechanism Mm -hmm. but um because it's a zw thing as well but um yeah super i want yeah it's super interesting i wonder why it is i i did um somewhat on that topic i think i also told you i found a lab that i can send blood of my adult greens to yeah and then if I can time it right and like collect the egg, like get the the blood out of the egg, if I can, uh, so that I'm not poking the babies at all, yeah, I could potentially yeah. draw blood from the egg uh, after babies hatch and yeah, send it off in DNA sex to the babies. So that would be a really cool idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try it. We're also, um, I told you my vet is great. We're also taking all of my animals possibly this month to a facility to do ct scans to get normals on all of their organs because there is no database for normals on organ placement size anything like that oh wow and and so we're gonna try and basically publish something for other vets to use for normals that's badass man that is so cool yeah it's it's gonna be very interesting and 
the reason why we're do doing this is because he had somebody local with a with a green tree die and he did the necropsy and he's like i think it's hearts big but i can't tell because i don't know uh, what, a normal what to compare it to yeah. and i'm like you can x-ray mine or whatever or not x-ray but you can you yeah. can ct mine if you need and he's like well i don't have one so i'm gonna have to rent a building and so we should just do them all at once and i'm like okay <laughs> that'll be that is really really cool yeah and so I, i'm also trying to see if i can't get and this is my open invitation if you have a vet that would be interested we're also trying to get other people with large collections to get to their vet to do cts to send them oh. to my vet so that he can create a large catalog of more species yeah with like his hope is to get like five to ten animals per species of tree oh wow and so then we could create like a good database of normals and then we know what to look for with you know heart displacement or heart s size irregularities and stuff like that wow yep wow 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 that's really cool yep so yeah if you're interested or if anybody in or yeah. listening is interested um if you got a, a vet that wants to participate um yeah hit me up that's so yeah i mean that's just one of the things i think is so interesting working with these animals is it's just like it really is the wild wild west with them still it's like there's oh yeah oh so little we actually know yeah even even with checking like zoo databases there's nothing yeah. to say what a large you know heart looks like in a tree monitor yep it's it's bizarre um but i we're already at over oh, an gosh. hour and a half holy crap um, <laughs> we by. i wanted to ask you as well do you yes. still have any are you holding back all those babies that you hatched are you selling any so for my the black trees i uh I, my original plan was to hold back all of them um but since i got two baby two unrelated babies from brandon i'm thinking about letting two of them go and keeping two Heck um yeah. And so I have a friend who's been hounding me for them. So I'll, oh, nice. Okay. I'll, I'll probably I was gonna say, them. where can people hit you up? To <laughs> you about them? I'll probably let those ones go to her, but um, I will have I will have um, greens available once they're a little bit older. Um, and then yeah. I've got more clutches coming in a couple months. Nice. And so, where do you prefer people get a hold of you if they're interested so, in buying stuff? Yeah, so Instagram is usually the easiest place to find me, Corey Martin Reptiles. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Yeah, thanks um, so much for having me on. Yeah, it was great. I, and it was last minute. Um, <laughs> I I <laughs> told you I was gonna I was gonna hassle Parker a little bit here. He uh he had some last minute stuff come up. Uh, we'll we'll just say he's uh hung over and couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah, any anything you wanna say to the people before we head out? No, I don't think so. Um no, I'm just I'm 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 excited to be on this uh, tree monitor train and um, looking forward to seeing what's to come the next few years. I think I've, yeah, the, the of interest, I, I, I've seen a huge uptick in interest recently, and I, I think that um, it's a really, really exciting time to be part of the community. It's, yeah, and it's it's also great to have more people jump ship from the, the ball python game and come to yes. the stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, like I said, I appreciate you yeah. coming on and taking the time, especially with it being like a six hour notice. So, yeah. well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, I will uh, definitely be in touch at some point and send you some pictures of those babies. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Yep. All right, guys. Appreciate you hanging out. This was fun. She was really cool to, you know, get to talk to on here. Um, appreciate everybody that listens. This is my first actual podcast I've done basically by myself uh, without, you know, Papa MJ here to help me out. So uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, last thing I just want to say, if you guys are looking for uh, cup holders, if you're looking for those 3D printed doors for the grasshoppers, cork flat panels like I have in all my cages, um, you can hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. I uh, just had a car die on me, and now I have to uh, try to fund that. So I got stuff for sale. <laughs> hit me up. But, uh, yeah, thanks anyways, guys, for, for hanging out. It was fun. And, uh, yeah, I will catch you guys hopefully soon-ish. I'll see you later.